What's up, everybody? Welcome to Super Retro, a nostalgic podcast about retro gaming, TV and film, pop culture, music, anything dope from the 80s and 90s. I'm your host, Tug. Oh, and early 2000s. We're adding early 2000s. Yeah. Anything dope from the 80s, the 90s, and early 2000s. I'm your host, Tuck. That's your host, Will. What's, what's up, up, y'all? What's up? What's up? How you doing? We're back. Sorry, I went on vacation. Well, I'm going to put air quotes in vacation. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, he went out there. Oh, yeah, I went out of the country. We're back now. So sorry about that gap, but I was we were trying to fill the the holes of us being gone with um with uh a few I got a couple videos Older. posted online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um but also I wanted to say I'm really sorry about the month gap between the podcast. That podcast that we just uploaded, the top the top twenty list mm-hmm. just hit, you know, YouTube and uh the audio Spotify and, and um Apple Podcast. That was that podcast was like almost a month old, and I just got around to to editing it because yeah, of the, the vacation and a bunch of stuff going on. And then we have another one backlog that we did about two weeks ago yep. that we'll be hitting soon. And then this one, I'm going to try to get this one out pretty quick right after it, just so we can kind of catch back yeah. up. All right, wanted to talk about this uh, NBA Jam TikTok that is still going on, pretty on Instagram. It's still going. I know it. I've never, since I've had Instagram, I've never logged in and seen so many likes. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild what's what's happening with it. You know, uh, I put, I just, you know, I know this is kind of petty, but it's, it, bro, as hard as we've been trying our whole, our whole podcast career. It's so And weird. now stuff is really starting to kind of come together for us. Yeah. It's so cool to see like, yeah. like how, and I know it just a like is petty, but it, you know, it's really not. You, for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, Quest Love liked the video. Kevin Garnett liked the video. Uh, Julian Edelman. Yep. Patriots legend. Uh, Jermaine Dupri. Like how, bro? Which is comedy, bro. I love Jermaine Dupri from back in the day. Um, and uh, the CEO of uh, Rockefeller Records, Jay-Z's company yeah. or whatever. I, I, every time I see one of them on there, I'm like, I look and be like, that's really him. And so many more. So many, oh, you know dude. what I noticed? So many sports. Lots, dude. A you, lot of uh, people that. Fighters, MMA fighters, boxers. A lot of fighters. Boxers. A lot of NFL players. Yep. I mean, it's been weird. That's it's cool, like it, It's like some, you do these videos and you don't know where they're going to go or what they're going to, what audience they're going to reach. And then all of a sudden, one of your videos like jumps into another, yeah. you know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm area code of people yeah. that never would have seen your show yeah yeah so man we're extremely thankful for everybody sharing our stuff and you know just uh uh taking this trip with us man it means a lot for yeah, real it i does. hate to get sappy on you but it means a lot it's God cool damn it. man it's fun it makes us even more motivated to do all these cool old school videos absolutely and we gotta do some shout outs oh and if you see me with this guys i know this is kind of weird i'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there we got a teleprompter i got a teleprompter now so i don't have to write it on the big whiteboard i don't have to Bro. look at my phone like i used to do like most of our episodes if you go back and look at it, i'm reading off my phone wills talk had us uh, just scrolls of notes bro. yeah and then i would write out the notes but now i have a teleprompter and the only thing that you have to look at occasionally is this ps4 controller in my hand which works because this is a a, a a a podcast that features a lot of gaming yeah. talk it could it could be older but we'll, we'll you know we'll it bear, could but you know what i mean us. i mean it's you know you gotta do what you gotta do bear with us i do have a ps4 in this bitch too all right i want to give a shout out to robert sperry all right my guy emailed us and it, it was yeah, a real was dope a good, email yeah that was it real was. cool to read how he's he's getting his stuff, blowing the dust off of it, and him and his son like to play it, but his Nintendo just broke, and he's getting it fixed, but he's got some other stuff. Uh, and, and he went into detail about some games that he likes. And yeah, just, man, that, to me, honestly, like reading that, is just the, it's just why we do it, man. For real. For like real. That is, I told people, I even showed people at work. I even showed people at work. Yeah. The, the email. Yeah. Like, dude. Look yeah, at how cool is this? It, it's really cool, man. To to just to to light a spark in somebody, or just to give them that nostalgic feeling. So, man, yep. hey, Robert, we appreciate you, bro. Keep gaming. Um, he said he's been listening since day one. Uh, th- he I think he put in the subject started from the bottom, which is dope. 
been listening since day one. It's cool. So, and he's from the Detroit area. Which, Will, you're man, not banned. He's cool with me. You're not banned yeah. from Detroit. I got a lot of heat on that NBA Jam video. From yeah, we Detroit talked about people. it on the last episode. Yeah. They'll get it. All right, guys. This is a, a holy grail item that we found at a yard sale. No one's going to believe us. The Nintendo World Championships. Gold oh. cartridge. Will's been on me for a long time about going to these yard sales, right? We finally go to one together. First thing we find, a 1990 Nintendo World Championship cartridge. Look at that thing. Psych! Totally fake. It tot that is not real. You totally know what this is right fake. here? Mailbag. Mail it's a mailbag, y'all. We got to send a big shout out to Jeremy at 1UP Retro. Send us this dope gold Nintendo World Championship cartridge from 1990 when they held the Nintendo World Championships. And what's really dope about it is it's literally, it doesn't just look like it. It's got the little... It's legit. It's got these buttons on the front that you change, and it changed the configuration of the game, but it comes preset with the exact way that they played the Nintendo World Championships. Yeah, so and you can recreate the exact Nintendo Championships from 1990. That's your right. House. We have with to do your this. buddies. Yeah, yeah. We should do this on live 100%. or something. Um, but yeah, so because we suck at most of those games. Exactly. So One Up Retro recreates these cartridges. And I think that is so sick. I mean, as soon as I heard about it from our buddy Rad Retro, bro, like uh, Matt, we were like, mm -hmm. I was like, I got to get the gold one. That's right. Because he got the gray card. I mean, that's really cool that somebody really did this. Yeah, so. I'm glad that exists. Me too. One that. Up Retro, that's awesome. Also, One Up Retro and Jeremy sent the 395 NES games in one mega collection card. Pretty cool card. That is cool as hell. I was actually playing this one earlier and uh, had all kinds of dope shit on it. Yeah. I was playing. I was playing Double Dragon. No, I was playing Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Did you get that? Yeah. See, bro, that's cool. We can play games we haven't collected yet. Bro, I want that game. No, I know. It's, it's it, it went to the top of the list for me. That's cool. I want that game. There's it, games. What's crazy is like we make all these lists in top what tens and twenties, and mm -hmm. like there's games we haven't played. I know. You know a, what I mean? A ton. Because we didn't get to play all the games of Nintendo. Yeah, and we were only exposed to what we were exposed to. You yeah, know dude. I mean? No, there's no like, you'll way. You'll see other people talking about games that I've never played, and they like love that shit. It's yeah. like, well, you know, you just had. It was in your market, and you bought it yep. at that time. You were a different age. It hit you different. And when they're like, it, like uh, people all have these emulators and shit where they can have every game that ever came out. Mm -hmm. Like, we never got into that. So yeah. We didn't get to. We just fucking skipped them. Shout one out up to retro. One Up Retro. You want to get some old, cool reproduction stuff? Go hit up One Up Retro. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jeremy. I think it's hilarious how you say Jeremy. Jeremy? You say it straight up like somebody from German Town. It's so funny. How, how do I say it? Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> So I got it every time. I was like, oh, my God. Is it Jeremy? Jeremy. 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 I love dog. it, dude. Dog. People got to say something about it. It's great. Jeremy, dog. That's <laughs> so great, bro. <laughs> Jeremy. Oh, Shout out shit. to Jeremy. Watch, you'll hear it now when you, Jeremy. When you fucking <laughs> edit it. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy. I was like, dog, he said it just like he always did his whole life. Hey, you can take me out. No, I know. I you love it. You can take me out of Germantown, but you That's know what I'm who saying? we are, bro. It comes out. All right, y'all. Who remembers Unsolved Mysteries? Bro, every single person. Man, when that music hits, what's it do to Dude. your chest? What's it do to your chest when that music hits when you're seven years old in the living room and you hear it come on? Sitting alone. Sitting alone. Deep. Like, that, people, you talk about binging. Like, mm -hmm. that was the beginning. Like, we used to binge those. Like, mm -hmm. when any time they'd come on. We was just invested. Bro, what it reminds me of is it reminds me of coming in the house when the sun was just about to go down when you were a little hungry. And you walk in, you can smell the grilled cheese. I can smell the chicken noodle soup. And all of a sudden, what's that from the other room? You hear, that sound, that you hear the sound. And for some reason... As creepy as Unsolved Mysteries is and was, uh, it made me feel comfortable. No, that guy, Robert Stack, man, that he His was voice. the show. His voice. I could hear him explaining something so crazy from the next room and immediately be like, hmm? You know what I mean? Like, And he was yeah. never seen again. Guess You're what, Will? Like, what? Robert Stack's my dad. No way. <laughs> he really was. Like, he, he comforted you and was telling you about the most fucked up story you've yeah. ever heard in your life. He told me bedtime stories. He was like... He really was, bro. 
He was like some shit your uncle would tell you when your mom wasn't around. Yeah. To scare you, <laughs> but to let you know you're all right. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? For like, sure. it, it was so weird. Man, my man died in 2003 at the age of 84. Hey, that's a good run, bro. That was a good run. He had to hit show under his belt. Scaring all these man, goddamn R. I. P. people. R.I.P. R.I.P. to Big Rob up there. <laughs> The show aired from 1987 to 1997. That's a good run, too. 16 seasons. Uh, uh, and this is why it means so much to us. 602 episodes. But 292 with old Rob. 292 with Stack. But, like, to me... <laughs> with, with the homie Stack. But to me, those 292 are all that's in existence. That's right. So, yeah. Like, do you can you remember one Unsolved Mysteries you watched without that dude? Well, I'm a nerd, and I watch them all on... They're on they're on Netflix now. Yeah. A new season. There's three new seasons on Netflix, and I love that shit, too. But, hey, but it, ain't, it ain't stacked. He started it. It ain't stacking them. He started uh, it. And uh, 16.6 million viewers at its peak in 89 to That's 90. That's crazy. Those are big numbers. Now. But hell, yeah. Like, goddamn, dude. But yeah, nothing more comfortable Man. than unsolved mysteries. Some of the most weird, and like a, lot, like a lot of these people grew up, and look what's big on Netflix and like documentaries and. Oh yeah. Like it's this. It's this kind of story. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? This was one of the first. This was one of the first like that. Yeah, where you were hear some stuff and be like, "What the fuck?" Because you know, I know, I know. Someone we went to an amusement park and they got kidnapped and was never heard from again. I'd be willing to bet there was nothing like that on television in the seventies. There's no way. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, like it was the first of its kind. When it came out, it was like pushing the boundaries. I feel, I feel like yeah. that. And they hold a special place in my heart. All right, y'all. I want to talk about the home run race that went down in the 1990s during Major League Baseball's 1998 season. Mark McGuire of the St. Louis Cardinals and Sammy Sosa of the Chicago Cubs pursued the league's long-standing and highly coveted single-season home run record, which was 61, Roger set Maris. in 1961 by Roger Maris. The season-long chase culminated on September 8, 1998, when Mark McGuire, facing Sosa and the Cubs, hit his 62nd home run of the season to break the record. McGuire finished the season with 70 home runs while Sosa finished with 66. The 1998 home run record chase as well as the previous year's pursuit of the record was widely credited by sports analysis with restoring interest in Major League Baseball and its fans following the 1994 strike. Yep. Mark McGuire's record was later broken in 2001 by Barry Bonds, who hit 73, 73 home runs. So the major league, what they do? They turned a blind eye to what was yeah, happening. They knew, bro. Everybody knows what happened and why he hit these home runs. Everyone knew before they broke the record what was happening. I know. Like that they act like it this just like the steroids just started. Yeah, they like, acted like it was, you know, oh my God, yeah. it's infiltrated. No, it's they, always it been, that been way. there since the eighties, bro. We're obviously talking about the steroid era of baseball. I actually wonder when it did start because I don't really know when it started. I'm assuming it started in the mid '80s, probably. Yeah, I would think so, but I, I don't know for and sure. And they didn't even test for it, so like, what, how, what's to say is what's illegal? Yeah, no shit. Um, and like they, like they said, this year was so cool, man. Watching that, like I remember watching. Oh, it was the best. Like most people were watching. It's not like where you start watching. People would watch baseball who hadn't watched baseball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like if you were in the room and said this shit was going down, you stopped. Dude, and the best part about it is this is when if you had cable. Oh, yeah. Chicago was on television every single day on the yep. Chicago channel on TNT or TBS yep. or something. And it was real easy to catch a Cardinals game too. It was real easy. But the thing is they always played each other. The Cubs and the Cardinals always played each yep. other. So you got to see them both play all the time. And then it became, it became musty TV. I mean, they were making the shit prime time. Yeah. It was so cool. So this is when they would baseball, cut, cut live to an at bat. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah, they would. Yeah. I, and I miss baseball on TV like that. I know you can still catch it. It's just it's not hard. the same. They make it hard, dude. It was everywhere. It was it was treated just like the NFL and in the, the Bra 90s. Braves, too. They were on every night. That's right. Braves were on every night. Cubs yep. were on every night. Yep. And you'd have like an ESPN game. That's right. But, Man, I miss that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you got to watch this thing firsthand. I mean, it consumed my whole my whole year yep. in 1998 they're like he's gonna do it he's gonna break it and like roger maris's record was so like 
just right like historic yeah like set night it was like a 30 something year old you record. never thought that would even get touched nobody would even get close no and they both shattered it yeah no shit and then they getting the later fucking the dude shattered both theirs bro i'm pretty sure i watched almost every single or i at least caught the highlight on sports center of every single home run both of them hit yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I watched um, the I, I I watched all of Bond seventy three. And, and then he, once it, I was a Giants fan, I did too. I watched them too. So and then once it got towards the end of that season, I mean, I didn't miss a game, bro. No, it was I was locked in TV. watching every game. It was must see. Uh, but listen to this shit. Mark McGuire admitted in a 2010 ESPN interview that he did in fact use steroids, but quote. Bro. Did this for health purposes. There's no way I did this for any type of strength use. Bruh. Yeah, he was enormous. Bro. Bruh. I'm here to tell you. I went down a wormhole and looked at every single one at the distance at every single one of Mark McGuire's 70 home runs. And this motherfucker hit multiple home runs over 500 feet, yeah. including a 545-foot bomb against the Florida Marlins on May 16th, 1998. Bro, bro my guy was yamming it. Uh, he's so big, bro. If you, like, like, he's like a dude who was enormous <laughs> and took steroids. He looks like a caricature of someone yeah. on steroids. Bro, I saw a wrestler. I forgot who it was. It might have been, like, the fucking Undertaker or somebody. He's huge. Somebody was standing next to him, mm. and they look so small. Bro, this motherfucker's neck. He looks like he steroids was deformed. That took he walk out there deformed and just take the bat and be like, "Bah!" No, he hit bombs, and Sosa <laughs> was big too, man. Like in, in the way, like Bonds even got bigger. Like these, all these dudes got bigger. But I, I I'm a baseball player, and I've mm. talked. I've had many arguments about this. Yeah, you. Yeah, about about like uh, if y'all didn't know, Will played uh, college baseball, and like I, no steroids make you hit a baseball. Like, there's not a steroid made that's going to make you hit a guy throwing 90. Well, that's what he was saying in the article. Like, he, you, those dudes were good mm -hmm. to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Like, Barry Bonds was good before he ever even knew what steroids was. For you sure. You know what I mean? For sure. And, like, I knew dudes. There's no doubt. I played with people who took steroids. Mm -hmm. They weren't shit. Mm -hmm. They yeah. didn't go pro. They yeah. never made it past a certain level of college or little league. Or, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They did the, taking steroids wasn't like a guaranteed way pathway to making the major league baseball. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got to be good yeah. before then. Yeah, for sure. He he said he said that he felt like his God given gift. This is what Mark McGuire said. He said he felt like his God given gift from God Himself was to hit home runs. I bet it was. And that's what his purpose was. Like, it's was a to great hit, feeling, bro. Was to hit dingers. <laughs> That's Seriously, it. hitting dingers is Mark McGuire's God-given gift. Yeah, and I can't really argue with that. And I did write in the notes. I said all that about the steroids and accusing him of being on steroids, which he admitted to say, "I have absolutely no nothing." I give no fucks. I don't care. No, they all were doing it. There's, Everybody. Yeah, that, there's dudes it. right now that are in the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. that no one caught. Yep, that did steroids on yep. the low and just stayed new. You know, right here. Mm-hmm. If somebody popped in today and was cheating, I think I would care. I'd be yeah. like, well, no one else is doing it. Or, you know, because the regulations and testing yeah, man. and like shit. Yeah, The way they're not putting these dudes in the Hall of Fame. Like, Barry Bonds isn't in the Hall of Pete Fame. Pete Rose, man. Yeah, Pete Rose is for another thing. I we know it's probably, for We should game, probably man. talk about that one day, too. We will, too. But, like, I mean, it's just, to me, it's just... Uh, Barry Bonds, Barry Bonds, 100% had a Hall of Fame career regardless of steroids. Yeah, I don't even care. Come on, man. Yeah. And to be, like we talked about... Uh, um, that era was so fun to watch. So, man, who gives a fuck? They gave everything mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. They they let us, they entertained the world. For sure. Like, and it definitely, like I said earlier, it definitely reignited people's interest yeah, in baseball it, because at the time, that's when it felt like baseball started to go down that dipped. curve. It definitely it dipped. dipped. And if it wouldn't have been for that, baseball would have been on the way out as yep. far as in the mainstream no, you're right. a lot earlier than it They than saved it did. baseball with that, with their steroids. Yep. All right, y'all, I want to talk about Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 1. Developed by Core Design as the debut entry in the Tomb Raider franchise. Here's, I did not know this. Originally released on the Sega Saturn, November mm -mm. 14th, 1996. Definitely didn't know that. Followed a week later for the PlayStation 1 on November 22nd of 1996. That's where I played it. Yeah, that's... 
when I think, look, I think when I think of PlayStation One, I think of a few games. Tomb Raider is definitely one of them. Hundred percent. This is a hard ass game right here. Yeah. For dude, you would get lost or because it was like a puzzle game, an yeah. exploration game. You had to you had to figure out combinations, do these. You know, it was just a. It's basically a big puzzle game. Yeah, it's you know? pretty cool. Move this rock here. It's like a new age Zelda. For sure. And before um, Zelda is now. And dude, this game was a huge hit. It sold seven million copies. It it kind of led the the chart like at the time there weren't a lot of games like this. You had a lot of movement and mobility as far as like you could like shimmy down these rocks. Oh yeah, she could do you it could a lot. hang on rocks. Yeah. You could like jump off the wall and do do shit like that. It so, definitely pushed the the envelope in the gaming technology. And then the the graphics seemed amazing, bro. They really did. The graphics seemed awesome, but you go back and look at Terrible. it now, it's there's like a weird time period because you know you go back and look at um, NES graphics and um, and Super Nintendo graphics and Sega Genesis graphics. They still look the same. They me. they they're different because they hadn't crossed over into that 3D realm yet. Yeah, the pixels. You know what I mean? Like they, they, it's like the 64, the PlayStation. Yeah. All of them were trying to do. Sh- Different shit. Yeah. And that little first stage was terrible. First stage of... Uh, like, it was rough. First stage of, of 3D was but rough. But it looks so cool to us. I don't care. Not one person was hating on any of it. Oh, yeah. No, Back it, then, no Oh, one. it was amazing. Yeah. Like, how many times did we say, the graphics can't get any better? Yeah. That's why, that like, meme? it shows, like... like the uh, sports get guys figures yeah, and they're yeah. like what the fuck but back then we were like this is awesome <laughs> i love the uh i love the um the the stone cold meme the wrestlers like gravish can't get any better he's like a square yeah it's so funny <laughs> but you can tell it's stone cold yeah but you yeah it's like his face just yeah. plastered you it's know? so fun what a fun time but uh man laura croft dude, it was like a Oh yeah, it was like uh, to me. It was like uh, Indiana Jones as a girl. There, it's ba- like if you look, it says uh, the character of Laura oh, yeah. was oh, based on several influences, including Tank Girl, Indiana Jones, and Hard Boiled. So, like you could just tell it was one of those games where you're just on this super cool like excursion. Adventure. Yeah, yeah it, excursion slash adventure. Yep. It really to try did to feel find like something. that. Artifacts, de- like booby traps everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you were in search of treasures and artifacts. Yeah, it was uh, fun, man. Yeah, and you see all kinds of cool animals, dude. I, what what I remember is you'd go all the way up, you get all the way up top, and you had to make this super long, complicated jump where you had to jump just at the right time. And if you missed the jump, you fell all the way back down and had to do this long, complicated trek back up there to just yeah, keep it was trying one it of those over and over. Brutal game. It was brutal for sure, and it didn't give a fuck nah, bro. how many times you messed up. They wanted your just time. Get up, just come on back. It's also one of the best-selling PlayStation games of all time, selling a total of seven million. That's all right. Hey, and I was one of them, and I actually. I keep trying to find it uh, at the gaming stores, and I, I I end up finding like two and three and stuff. Yeah, I sure can't find number one, but uh, yeah, man, Tomb Raider, you gotta love it. Y'all remember playing Tomb Raider? And the, I mean, what the the shit that spawned off of it? I mean, mm. this this went into movies. Oh yeah, like I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, action figures. <laughs> yeah, and the the I, the infamous uh, Laura Croft meme where she's like a yeah, she's got like triangles. Yeah. <laughs> it's comedy. All right, y'all, I want to tell you about a cheat code that people have suspected for years. When you're playing GoldenEye, what's the first thing you say if you're going to play multiplayer? Everyone says it. No odd job. Nobody wants you to have odd job because he, it, he seems impossible to hit. This little short fucker, you can't hit him. Well, a- according to Mark Edmonds, a engine designer and developer of the game, he confirmed that Odd Job's hit zone is in fact smaller. Cheating. It's ba- if you if you're playing with Odd Job, the chances of you getting hit are far less than your opponents. Thus, that is cheating. <laughs> they and, shouldn't have put him on the game. But here's the thing: uh, he confirmed in an interview that they knew about it. They knew his hit zone his hit zone was smaller, and but they didn't fix it when when the game it. got closer to being finished because. 
um, they thought it would make the game more interesting. And it definitely does. And it, they just wanted people to figure it out on their own. And ev here's another thing why he's hard to hit. You know on, on 007 when you're playing multiplayer, that, that auto-aim kind of locks in on somebody if you're not aiming. Mm -hmm. And and the auto aim is over his head. Yeah, because it auto aims like if it was a normal size. A normal person. hit zone. If you don't like physically move the scope onto him, you're not gonna hit him. Yeah. You're gonna shoot over him every time because you know those shooters. You gotta games, like auto aim and go down. Yep, that's right. You auto aim and press down. Yep. So definitely harder to hit. And I just think w when developers do this. I think it's great. I mean, it's their games. They can do shit like yeah, this. I mean, if we they'd have made it fair, we would ha we wouldn't have this to talk about. That's right. You so I mean? all these all years, all the guys the same exact size. That's right. We're talking about it yeah, right now cool. because of it. So no wonder everybody wants odd job. You cheating bastards. <laughs> All right, y'all, I want to talk about GoldenEye 007 on the Nintendo 64. Man. Released in 1997 as a first-person shooter game developed by Rare and published by Nintendo for the Nintendo 64. Based on the 1995 James Bond film GoldenEye, the player controls the secret agent James Bond to prevent a criminal syndicate from using a satellite weapon. They navigate a series of levels to complete objectives such as recovering or destroying objects while shooting enemies. In a multiplayer mode, up to four players compete in several deathmatch scenarios via split screen. Split screen, bro. It faced low expectations from the gaming media during development. However, it received critical acclaim and sold over 8 million copies, making it the third best-selling Nintendo 64 game. One of the the best. game was praised for its visuals, gameplay depth, and variety in the iconic multiplayer, multiplayer mode. mode. That's what it was made for. It's credited with it's cre it's often credited it's often how do you say credited? Credited. It's often credited for <laughs> <laughs> Put that extra E D in there, man. <laughs> Put that extra E D in there. <laughs> credited. <laughs> credited. Credited. You said it to credited. Credited. I just did. That's it. It's often credited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying it till it comes out. <sighs> Hold on, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> It's often credited. It, 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 it. <laughs> you can't do it again, bro. I'm gonna pee on myself. <laughs> what the fuck are you saying it like that? Credited. My God. Credited. 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 I can't. Credited. I'm just gonna say something else. <laughs> Try it one more. It's often credited. It's often credited with pioneering features such as <laughs> atmospheric. All right. It often gets recognized for pioneering features such as atmospheric single player missions, stealth elements, and multiplayer console deathmatch. The game is considered one of the greatest video games ever made, Definitely is. with many of its elements leaving an enduring impression in video game culture. Like, that's nostalgic as hell. Now, we obviously have to talk about the multiplayer mode. Here's what I what I read about it today. It was developed two months before its release by two dudes. They were just like, throw this in. They were like, you know what? We have all the tools here. Can, hey, can you guys figure it out? And two months later, they came can up with this Can you have it thing. to where they shoot each other? Yeah. That's what somebody said. And bro, they changed gaming with this yeah, shit. Hundred that like they they that, that's that's what's so dope about about everyone's story. Like when you think about it, these guys changed the whole world of gaming and left their mark just by giving. I don't care option. what they've done. I don't care what they've done in gaming. Yeah, no greater impact in in gaming culture and retro gaming than the multiplayer mode on 007. Yeah, like letting you go shoot your friends. Amazing, bro. Me and my boys used to take cardboard boxes and cut them out and tape them to the television in a configuration so where couldn't we couldn't see. see where they were at. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking yeah. about. Like a deathmatch mode in that was so cool. Yeah, because... It was such a futuristic type feeling. You, we played it so much that we knew where... Well, I could look where you were at and be like, I, I know exactly where he's at. where he's at. I'll be there in four seconds. 100%. That's why it got sort of bad. Yeah. 
They, they, you, they didn't think about that. Nah. They didn't think, but I mean, how would? Like they? you said, though, like I didn't know, like I could see that being something they were like, just throw this in. Yeah, so it had its flaws. And it, it became bigger than the game they actually designed to put out. And here's the thing. The, the mission mode, amazing. I know, I bet it is. It's amazing. That, you got to think. But it's overshadowed. That's the that's game. You, yeah. The, the game is that mission. It's so damn Not good. Not single, the uh, multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And now look. Yep. Like, the multi, I would say the multiplayer overshadows the actual game. And you know what? It's never changed. Every game that's ever came out, mm-hmm. that's what it is. Yep. The single player, yep. people play and they're like, yeah. Yep. They'll play it one time through, yep. beat the game real quick, and then multiplayer the rest of the game's oh, yeah. life. Oh, yeah. And that started there. Man, uh, just, bro, one of my favorite games of all time, easily, and... I want to g- I want to play it. I know it's I, I know it's not as fun as it used to be. No, I we want, should have a night game night. I but. want a game night where we just play that. Yep. I'm That's down. how much I love this game. Hey, that pause uh, music is on fire. You cannot talk about 007 without talking about the pause music. Like, Bro, how was that put in there? Who made this? Who made this shit? Let's play it. It's hard, bro. It's like a real song. When the when the vibes come in, it's it's nasty when the vibes come in. Watch, watch. <laughs> Bro. Motherfucker was going in on this boy. Who made that? A legend is who made it. <laughs> That's who made it. Bro. Imagine, I wish I go low on you. Imagine how much people was pausing that. No shit. And just walking away. Feels good, boy. Like you'd come back and it would be playing that, and you'd be like, "All right, I could let that shit loop all day." Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty fire. <laughs> nah, it's so funny, bro. All right, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> banger right there, man. B- banger, and I don't think we appreciated it as much as it needed to be appreciated no. back in the day. I mean, we know it bopped. We know it bopped. But looking back on that, you're like, God damn. Yeah, no. Now now I appreciate it way more than I did that. Way more. Back and I'm then, so happy I had that. I don't want to hear about none of that new shit. You didn't get to experience that. No. And it, there's you don't nothing. You know about this Paul song. <laughs> there's nothing in gaming today that's going to hit like that hits when you hear it yeah. in your chest. All right, y'all. No Larry Bird slander will be tolerated. No, you better put I some respect on his name. Put some respect on his goddamn name because I've been on the internet and on social media and I've been seeing these youngsters disrespecting Larry Bird, talking about he wouldn't be shit in today's wow. NBA. Man, that is bullshit. You know what's whack about the NBA today? The defense. Worst defense in history. No defense. Final scores be 237 to 199. No defense. Larry B would eat y'all's asses up on the court if any of NBA was guarding him today. My man was straight cooking in the 80s and early 90s. And and if you're telling me if, if, if Nikola Jokic is... Cooking motherfuckers today, big tall lumbering, just yeah, coming and through like the lane. Luka man, like they're both slow white dudes cooking. It's, hey, it's basketball IQ. Yeah, Larry right? Bird's is in that same. Larry Bird's in that same uh, vein, bro. Larry Bird would absolutely cook today's NBA. I'm tired of it. The the I, the basketball IQ is through the roof. Ask Magic Johnson. Would would, would, would Magic Johnson? Would Magic Johnson? Do do well in today's NBA. Yes. Would Michael Jordan do well in today's NBA? Yes. Larry Bird was cooking with both yeah. of them. And there were all, three chefs in the kitchen, and Larry B was one of them. Ask all them if he was doing good, if he would kill now. Hundred percent. When when you hear NBA players talk about yeah. Larry Bird, they're like he's one of the best players I've ever seen. He's definitely top ten in the NBA of all time. And like you, like we said, if Nikola Jokic is getting off, Man. if if um, it was about skill, bro, he he didn't need he he could, but he didn't need to. He just stepped back, and my man played a game with his left hand because he got bored. Yeah, he was like, "Watch this." 
He's like, almost, yeah. I'm a score left handed. And one of the most iconic trash talkers That's what I'm of all saying. time. He was top 10 shit, shit talkers all time. Yeah. And, and just NBA is way too soft nowadays. Yeah. He to, got even, to even insinuate that Larry B wouldn't cook. I'm not yeah. hearing it. No Larry B slandered. No. Nah. Will, will be tolerated. And, and since we're on the subject of, 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 dude, I'm really starting to find myself like 80s and 90s NBA. Mm, so I good. love the 80s and 90s NBA. It's almost as nostalgic for me as uh, some of the games and movies we talk it. about because I, it was such a part of my life. Yeah, like you said about we talked about baseball earlier because it was available to us. Yeah, Sports Center too. Yeah, all that, bro. Sports Center. I'm telling you, Sports Center changed shit for me. It's yep. like if I didn't see it, I felt like I missed out on something. Like I think how lucky we are to we got to watch the Bulls all the time. Yeah, we got to watch it. That Michael Jordan. Run. I got to watch almost every game he ever played because of the Chicago Channel. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, since we're talking about it, I want to talk about Spud Webb. Man, y'all remember Spud Webb? Five seven. If you don't look him up, <laughs> if you don't know who Spud Webb is, let me tell you about it. Yeah. Spud Webb was selected by the Detroit Pistons in the eighty seven as the eighty seventh pick in the NBA draft, which is in the fourth round. He was ultimately cut by the Pistons and picked up by the Atlanta. Hawks. Yep. And this is where he left his mark. He became a right hand man to Dominique Wilkins. My man, dude, he was fast as hell. Oh, he dude. was like the fastest player lightning. in the league. He was lightning. He was the fastest in the league. And so. Could jump out of the gym. 5'7, y'all. My man was 5'7, okay? And they knew his, some, of his, some of his teammates knew that he could dunk. But they've only seen him do like a one overhanded dunk. They had no idea because at practice he had never practiced anything. It, and what I'm talking about is he went on to participate in the 1986 <sighs> slam dunk contest against Dominique Wilkins yeah. and some other legends. Jordan wasn't in it that year. And not only did he participate, but he won, y'all. 5'7". Doing crazy shit. So skinny, too. I mean, the skinniest thing you've ever seen. Look like a child out there. Yeah, when he gets when he jumps, though, man, bro, doing amazing dunks. Not just not just amazing because he was doing them. Yeah, but if any of them were doing them, they'd be amazing. And it just looks so cooler when you're that small. And um, he's actually listed as five six on Wikipedia, but everywhere else you look, he's uh, listed as five seven. Which five, I've always he, heard he was five seven. He's probably five five. No shit. Uh, he had an NBA career from 1985 to 1998. It's a good run. Man, but Spud, bro. That, that's a cool nickname, too. Spud. Spud. Spud yeah. the whole name. Spud Webb. But, yeah, 5-7 won the dunk contest. I remember that shit like it was yesterday, y'all. Yeah, I was locked was, in on that. It was that. cool to watch. So Spud won this contest in 1986. In the following two years, Michael Jordan won in 1987 and 1988. Mm. Which is a perfect segue into this next thing I want to talk about. Spud Webb had a 46-inch vertical, y'all. My wild. dude was hopping through the roof. Uh, but yeah, 46 inches, man. Can you can you imagine? Which is almost no. the highest vertical in NBA history. So let's talk about the highest vertical in NBA history. Why don't we? It's a three-way tie with three absolute legends. And I abbreviated it so Will wasn't known. It would be a surprise. I can to guess him. who all three of those are. You can. And here, I want to lead with the legend, Louisville, Kentucky's own and icon. Who is it, Will? Daryl Griffin. Daryl Griffin. Mm -hmm. I saw my man walking down the hallway the other day at the U of L game, which may, basically makes us related. Um, so yeah, like I could touch him. He was, he was right there. He was fresh, too. He had a good NBA career, too. He did, man. I didn't realize how good it was. Yeah. Uh, and, and I started looking into it because... It was solid. Bro, they retired his jersey a, in Utah. Yeah, he was a solid player for a long time. He really was. He had a long career, yeah. too. And he's a, one of our hometown Louisville Cardinal legends. Yeah, he does all kinds of dope shit around yeah. here. So my man had a 48-inch vertical. Daryl Griffith, only one of three with this 48-inch vertical. That's cool. And, and, and Wilt Chamberlain oh, is yeah. the WC. I knew it. Yeah. Um, Wilt Chamberlain had a 48-inch vertical as well. And, of course, this is fitting. I did not see this coming. I did not know this. And it, it, it makes all good in the world if you really think about it. Michael Jordan having a 48-inch vertical 
tied for the highest vertical of all time, really sits well when you think about his brand. He gave him the name Air. Air Jordan, flying, all that. I, I didn't realize he, he had the highest vertical in yeah. NBA history. Uh, yeah. That's wild. I learned something new today, y'all. Yeah, Google those, it. Those three dudes can hop. Michael Jordan, 48-inch vertical. His airness, uh, everything associated with him, associated with him is jump man, Air Jordan jumping. Yeah. So it, it's only fitting that my guy has the 48-inch vertical. All right, y'all. I really want to keep this a part of the podcast. Follower and listener topics, and we want to just re react live off the top of the dome. All right, so this one is from Daddy-O on the patio, which is a great handle. I fully <laughs> support that. Awesome. He said, best TV slash movie cars from the 80s and 90s. Well, I think that's an easy one. The best is obviously the DeLorean. Wouldn't you say? Mm -mm. What? Knight Rider. Knight Rider. It's pretty iconic. It talk. It's pretty iconic. They talk to you, bro. The Hoff. Plus, they had the Hoff. Yeah, and that little red. Fucking yeah, when it's when you would turn it on, on that, that shit area. would go. Yeah, or when I you sat in it. You did? Yeah. Huh. When I was a young kid, <laughs> I got a picture of it somewhere. I'm sure you. What? And, yeah, I got. How a, do we not have this picture? I have a Polaroid of me sitting inside Night Rider. I'm gonna need that. Yeah, with a cool little like a little Peaky Blinders looking hat. Where like, you think you can find it? I'm gonna look for it. I'll look for it. If hey, if we find it, I'm putting it right, right. here. Bing. That was um, sick. Uh, I'll look for it. Um, so yeah, man, I would say uh, I, I get it, and it is the one that popped into my mind. And then there's the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, Dukes of Hazard may have been filmed uh, before the '80s and '90s, right? I don't I mean, know. I, it was definitely in. The it 80s. was huge in the '80s, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I was watching it. I was watching that shit religiously when it came on. I was locked in. Hundred um, percent. So uh, yeah, though, but all those cars. The the Ghostbuster vehicle. What do you call that thing? Ecto-1. The Ecto-1. Dude, that one's pretty good. Yeah, it is. All those, actually. That's, That's what I'm right. saying. These are just off the top of the dome. Like, I'm sure we're missing so many. Yeah, but that's definitely them. All right, so this one is from Matt the Mod. He said, have you guys done an episode on Pogs? Did you play Pogs? No, but I know exactly what they are. Bro, I, I had some. I did too. I collected them. I would go up to Red Giraffe. I don't know if anybody remembers Red Giraffe, but it was the, I don't know if it was a Louisville thing. Yeah, a video store. It was a video store and it was a rival to like Blockbuster and all the other ones. You would go up there and they'd have the little section where they were hanging. And I remember I, I would always go up there and just get the, the latest and greatest packs. You had the little, the ones that like, the hologram pogs, mm -hmm. you know, but them hologram pogs. I had some, you know, I, I, Honestly, I don't think I ever knew how to play. I just collected them because yeah. I liked the way they looked. Thought they were cool. Yeah, I want to get some though. It was like it, one of those things that just you had to have. Yeah, I remember trading them all the time with my friends. Yeah, I, I do remember playing. You like smack them or something. Um, I have no, I don't. But know. it was more, and I I had a little case that would hold them. Had like it looked like a pill bottle, but it was for pogs. Yeah, I see them every now and again at flea markets. I still see them. Yeah, I want to get some. I think they're trying to make a little push to come back. So yeah, mm -hmm. pogs were awesome. Just to just to have just another thing to collect yeah. so this one's from mr gray 215 he said let's talk about how as kids we watch really inappropriate movies and we've talked about that this a lot this is our podcast yeah faces of death all of the horror Nightmare films on um street fucking Fr friday the 13th halloween hellraiser yeah fucking all of these, christine yeah all these wild ass horror films cujo like shit that would scar you for life. You were just watching it six. I know. There was nothing better than than eighties horror films as a seven year old. Like think about how like we think about our children now. They would never No, I'm saying like even as parents, you're like, I can't let him like in your you, you have you inner can't. monologue monologue going on with yourself saying, right. I can't let him watch this. Yeah. This is not good. Yeah. And there was none of that when we were children. It like was we such were, a different time. We were sitting in a living room watching fucking people get murdered. Yep. Like chopped in half. Yeah. Like, I don't even think we can <laughs> say this on there. Yeah. But like and like we were so left alone and like to deal with it ourselves. You know what I mean? Like just <laughs> to process you and then go to, to bed. Yeah. They had to process like this is fake. Yeah. Like somehow in your mind. This is all fake. I'm yeah. going to go to bed and it's going to be fine. Yeah, there's no one in the closet. Yeah, there's no one. Or there might be. Yeah, there's no way <laughs> this is going to happen to me tomorrow when I'm in the woods. Damn. Like as a kid, like they just threw us in there. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, man. 
It was too inappropriate for us. But what a time to be alive that was. I know. I know. Such. What a time. It'll never, you know, and and just gaining access to the stuff we gained access to. It was a real art. You know, yeah, I think uh, there was a way to do it. There was a house you knew you could go to. There was a movie you knew you could watch when the person wasn't around this and that. There was just an overall art to I it. I think it was a beneficial thing that we went through. Mm-hmm. And then no kids today get to have that. That no kids, I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere. Yeah, but there you are. The majority of children in this world we'll never did not go to, through the same process no. that we did just because it's of just sheer different. availability. Yeah. And it's just different from parents. Yeah. Yeah. Like our parents, there was nothing wrong with our parents letting us do this. That's just the way it was. Yeah. I, I, and it was just so new. Duh. All right. All right. So Joseph Rubelkava. Okay. I think I said that right. All right. Y'all. He so Joseph. All right. So Joseph Ruble Kava. We're sorry. Sorry, bro, if I if I butchered that. But he said, which one was better console and had a bigger impact? PlayStation or N64? I'm assuming he's talking about PlayStation 1. Yeah. Um that's a damn good question. Yeah, but I think to me, 64 was the one I liked better. Mm -hmm. But I think like PlayStation 1 had a longer lasting effect on the industry as a whole you know what yeah. i mean by that yeah i know exactly what you're saying like, seems like nintendo was a like a past sort of system y sure yeah and then playstation was like the future it seemed like games continued like the, the games that went down the playstation lane just kept continually getting better and better yeah, and better and on just, other yeah, systems yeah 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 that that was like the real progression and of discs games. you the, know what i mean yeah. like, and like and it's where nintendo was like not innovative. That was its whole thing. They the, weren't innovative. It was all 3D. Yeah, and like in PlayStation went this way and everything went that way with them. That's right. Yeah, you know I agree I mean? with that. Like, yeah. but, but to me, I played the shit out of N64 as opposed to PlayStation. Yeah, well, see, I played a lot of PlayStation. I remember playing the hell out of Spawn. Yeah, Tomb I played Raider, them. I'm just saying. My, uh, if Crash you, Bandicoot. If you looked at my, my history log, it would have mm -hmm. been way more N64. Sure, it, it's hard for me to say. I feel like I probably had an equal amount of those two because of uh, all the sports games at first that I was playing on yeah. PlayStation 1 but then but then with the 007 and the and the Mario 64 and oh yeah but Twisted Metal on the PlayStation yep. 1 that was Played special the shit bro out of it. that was special damn yep. so yeah it's hard to say I can't really pick one but if I had to say one that had a bigger impact on gaming with everything we just said about the uh, the PlayStation and gaming going with it, just like thinking about the the attributes that 007 lent to gaming and like the the Zelda games and the 3D and stuff. Ah, fuck, I can't answer that question. Mm. Yeah, they're both they're both solid consoles uh, for the time. Really, for sure. I I as much as I hate this, as much as. I'm a Nintendo guy. I think PlayStation 1 left a bigger mark on me than the Nintendo 64, but it's close, bro. It's, yeah. I think I would give the nod to PlayStation 1, but I know that, you know, you can make a long list of reasons why Nintendo 64 is better than PlayStation 1. You, can. you really can, the games and this and that, but I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's yeah, hard to so say. So we didn't answer so that. I'm not sure I answered your question. And I'm not, and, you know, it just is what it's it is. It's the way it is. But y'all, hey, that's the listener topics for this week. We're gonna do it. Try to do it every podcast. If I just remember to make yeah. a post that day before we do it, so email us or just we'll make a post and comment on them. Yeah, super retro pod at Gmail or any of our socials, and uh, we'll we'll add it to the queue. We still got a bunch from you guys. Thanks. Yeah, we. Hey, I appreciate everyone. We haven't if, forgot a lot of them. If we didn't answer you today from the post that I made, um. Uh, it's it's not because it wasn't good. It's because we may have already talked about it. All right, y'all. Time for another mailbag. Man, I love this shit that we've gotten to the point where people are sending us shit. It Pretty doesn't cool. really get much better than this. This is so exciting. It's like Christmas. What's in here? All right, let's oh, go. We know what's in there. Now we know what's in here. It, this is from Jay at a dope-ass company called Nutty and Nostalgia. They take discontinued treats... From back in the day, like all the dope Man, shit. what a genius idea. And they turn it into like a dessert in a jar that you can eat. Man. And you guess, what we're, guess what we're fixing to do. 
You got hey, pull it out, Will. Yeah, pull it yeah. out the pocket. Boom. And I just noticed this spoon's been hanging halfway on my pocket the whole podcast, which is hilarious. Mine's people. already fell. Cheers. All right, so yeah, we're about to taste some of these treats that my man sent to us. I'm from, excited. From our past. First one. Let's go with this first one. Uh-oh. 90s crisp. Mm. Sweet peanut butter cream mixed with crispy cookies. 90s crisps, y'all. Let's try I'm this. I'm all shit. about it. This is awesome. Right, this is on. our childhood. Here, you go ahead. And you, you can start working on that. This is our I'm childhood. I'm going to open the other one up. You open that one Look, up. Look, bro. Nostalgic spread. Nostalgic spread. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's this one? Who remembers Butterfinger BBs? Oh, everybody. Literally everybody. They don't make Butterfinger BBs anymore. You can't get them. My man turned this into a, a treat. We're about to try this Butterfinger BBs. This is what... Come on, man. What's it smell like? It smells good. Get you a little nab off of it. I wonder <laughs> if I should mix it up. Yeah, mix it up. Get you a little nab. Get oh, you, my God. Oh, shit, Will. <laughs> oh, my God. Get you some. Bro, what? stop. It's fire. <laughs> just, just realize it's going to be fire. <laughs> Before I... <laughs> no, seriously. Wait, wait, wait. Like, if there's any reservations, bro, you don't like it? Bro, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's am I'm not even just saying that. Well, this is way, way, way better than I thought it was going to be. How, bro? Like, Jay, what you doing, bro? Bro. Oh, my God. Here, no, don't go in anymore. I'll eat that whole thing. No, I'm taking it home. Take it, my <laughs> I, I, I. There's no way they all can be that good. So how good? Which one was that? The, the 90s crisp? Yeah. Show them that one. Oh, hold on. I highly oh. recommend that one. 90s crisp. God. Oh, my God. Damn. Is this going to... This is unbelievable. All right, here. Now, here we go, y'all. Since that one was so good, this I can't... This is illegal. I can't tell you how excited I am to open up this oh joint right God. here. Oh, Lord. There's whole chunks in this piece. Seriously, bro. There's whole chunks in this you know, bitch. You know like a nutty butter? Hmm? This is like a nutty butter spread. <laughs> a nutter butter. For sure. All right, y'all. Here we go. First oh taste God. of the first taste of the Nutty Fingers BBs from our guys over in this Nutty and Nostalgia. Oh, man. I got a chunk, too, boy. Man. I got a chunk. Bro, my mouth is watering. My mouth is already watering. Yeah, that was so good, bro. Oh, I got a chunk right there. Like, an unexpected chocolate chunk just hit me. Mmm, good Lord, my bad. Mm. Snatched it from him. Like, give me that shit. I got to get to give me another scoop. Mmm. Yeah, it gets better the more you eat. The more my, you my God. I mean, come on, look at it. It's on the side of this. I'm just going to go ahead and get that. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Damn. I damn. definitely taste the Butterfinger. This shit is fantastic, y'all. And it, what a perfect combination for the show. Yeah. Nostalgic treats. Couldn't go better with our... From back uh, in the day. There we go. Right up our alley. Last one, y'all. Strawberry cheesecake snack bar. Bro, we might have to mix that up. Bro, when I tell you I love cheesecake. Me too. I don't think anything, any food or dessert in this world makes me happier than a solid piece of Man, cheesecake. We're, wait, we we can we are on the same page. I love cheesecake so damn me too. much. And he did send me a message and tell me this one was in the box, and he said that we should put it in the refrigerator. Um, we fucked up just mm. to activate that cheesecake taste. But I guarantee you, it's still gonna be mm. fire. It we didn't put it in the fridge, but right. I will. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Jay, but but your stuff is fire. Oh my lord! Look at this! Look at look at this! Like you need to get on his website, his TikTok. Oh my god! His website, oh, and you need to look at how they make this stuff. Oh, the smell! It's so cool. Like, see that? I'm gonna go ahead and get that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotta mix that up. Oh my god, dude! How is this possible, Jay? Look at the bottom. What kind of wizardry are we doing over there? Yeah, y'all got a magic, y'all got a magic building over there. You know that my man's over here cooking up 
potions. <laughs> <laughs> fucking like Zelda. You give us fucking how many hearts does give us? Is it good? Bro, I don't need to put that in the refrigerator. <laughs> Hell no. How? That's real good. This shit is the best shit I've ever had in my life. I'm not even joking. No, nah, man. Nah, yeah, this is fire. I am not even joking. This is the best sweet treat I've ever had in my life. Like earlier. Dude, get down there. Look low. Look, look at that. Oh, my God. You didn't hit that. Oh, it's like the you, bread. You didn't, didn't hit it. that crust. I didn't hit that crumble, did I? I didn't hit that graham cracker crumble, did I? Look, earlier, my kids got some Starburst chews, like the little bites. Oh, my God. And I ate one, and I'm like, man, this shit isn't even good. I was like, this is way too sweet. Like, this Starburst is not hitting for me. It's just, dude, it's just too much. This is like some, this is like some scientific in the lab cooking some shit up. I'm serious. Some Go. mad scientist type dessert type shit. Good lord. I'm like, oh, I, oh my god, I got the crumble. Like, oh my god, look. Just know that. Me and Tucker are going to watch UFC fights after this, and don't think we're not going to crush these. Bro, I got, oh, I cannot wait for this. <laughs> How you get down there? What's it, what is that down there like? <laughs> Whew. That's like peanut butter. That hit me in my soul right there. I'm not even joking. Mm-hmm. That hit me in my soul. I had I timed out for a minute. Man. I'd take a time out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this guy. Who is this guy? Thank you, Jay. This shit should be everywhere. It should on be. On every store shelf in America. It should be in Costco. If yeah. this was in Costco <laughs> and the Costco lady was giving out free samples. You'd dude, be printing your own money, Jay. Bro, you you'd be a billionaire. <laughs> You need to be a billionaire. You need to. This needs to be everywhere. Like Somehow we need to get this into the hand of the Costco lady mm. and have her offered out to people. Yeah. Well, and the whole game will change. This is amazing. Nutty and Nostalgia. Go check them out. Check them out on TikTok and everywhere else. Go get some of this shit. You will absolutely not be disappointed. I promise. All right, y'all. That's the show. This was an awesome man. show, man. Now that, we're all full. Bro, the, the, that. Whew. That nutty and nostalgia hit me different. Man, I'm glad we waited till the end. Me too. <laughs> me too. Like, I, we kind of forgot to do it at the beginning. Man. And got it in at the perfect. end. It was just a perfect top off of the show. So, guys, as always, thank you for tuning in. Check out our TikTok. Check out our Instagram. Please go follow us on YouTube. Um, we're really trying to build that. I'm going to start focusing on throwing videos up there more often. But always you'll be able to catch the full length video on YouTube, yep. obviously. We're but growing we're gonna... them all slowly, yeah. but surely. So, superretropod at gmail.com. Yeah, that's it, man. Fun episode, hey. man. Glad yeah. to be back. That's right. What do you always say, Will, at the end? Keep it retro. Look at him. He keep... looked at me like a deer in headlights. Keep it retro. Keep it retro. Peace. <laughs>